you are about to see an amazing demonstration of the protective capabilities of the state-of-the-art in bulletproof vests. On this table is a selection of the weapons that will be used. Everybody probably can recognize this weapon, the Uzi, a submachine gun that can fire at the rate of 600 rounds per minute. 12 rounds will be fired. Behind the vest is a block of plasticine. So far, so good. There are no holes in it. The bullets have not gone through. Indentations are looked for. The vest must also protect whoever is wearing it from injury behind the armor, behind the place where the bullets have landed. There are no indents. See how close together the shots have landed. Now the shooting continues. A 357 Magnum revolver, a very powerful handgun. No problem with this either. No bullets have gone through, and there are no indents in the plasticine. The back lining of the vest is intact. Can this vest give protection from the most powerful handgun in the world, the 44 Magnum? We shall see. Three shots have been fired. Let's look at the plasticine again. This time there are indents. The scientists are not surprised, but the indents are well within the limit allowed. Now, a bigger but less powerful bullet, the 45 ACP, fired from a United States military service pistol. Confidence is high. There are no penetrations and no indents in the plasticine. The final and smallest handgun is now used, a 38 Special Revolver. A surprise awaits. The, bullets bounced off there on the, the camera saw it. The final bullet bounced off, and another is found on the ground. Remarkably, two bullets have impacted the vest and have bounced back onto the ground. These have actually bounced off. They've actually bounced off onto the grass. Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Now for something much more likely to destroy the vest. A 12-gauge shotgun. The cartridge chosen is the double O buck. In this one cartridge, there were 12 pellets, each 9 millimeters in diameter, blasted at the vest. None have penetrated and the indent is still well within the limit allowed. A bruising maybe, but a life is saved. The indents must not be deeper than 44 millimeters for the USA, or not deeper than 25 millimeters for the UK. This indent is 18 millimeters. The vest is now examined. The outer cover is removed. The lining is cut away and the inner armor material is exposed. And here we see bullet debris on the surface on the front layer of armor material. Layers of armor material are peeled away one by one, revealing more debris upon each layer. The bullets have been flattened. Some have broken into pieces. Stress marks in the armor material are seen, the deepest in the center, in the place where the double O buck pellets landed.
come out. Good, good, good. Head. Now there is no more debris. Apart from stress marks, there is no more damage to the armor material. The vest still has protective properties after the severest testing. But there is more to come. Well, this is the vest that we shot earlier with uh, about 36 rounds of uh, different ammunition. We're now going to shoot uh, an ordinary vest, that is a standard uh, Aramid vest, uh, and we're going to see that that will also stop some uh, rounds of ammunition, and then we're going to wet it, and having wetted it, we will shoot it again, and we will find that the ordinary standard armour uh, will in actual fact have lost uh, its defensive properties, and uh, uh, the rounds that we fire at it, once wetted, will penetrate. We'll now examine the vest. These are the two bullet strikes. And as expected, neither of the bullets have penetrated. However, it's worth noting at this point how deep the indentations are compared with the indentations that we saw in the plasticine uh, from the Jack Ellis vest.